so today we are going to discuss about atomistic or atomic mechanism of diffusion so in order to understand atomic mechanism of diffusion one should know about the defects of material at least for the metallic system the crystalline material we should know the defects in crystalline solid what are the different kind of defects and their dimensionality and how they are going to impact on the diffusion process so you know what is perfect crystalline solid where all the atoms and molecules are arranged themselves ideally means totally periodic long range periodic arrangement is there however if there is sudden imperfection suppose crystal defects always present so there are different kind of defects and their dimensionality also will be different so if you want to know the thermodynamically what are the different types of defect you can understand so for that thermodynamically if you can classify then we can classify them as equilibrium or non equilibrium defects so addition of certain defects up to a equilibrium concentration decreases the free energy and making the material thermodynamically more stable then these are in the general point we can tell they are equilibrium defects so if you look at zero dimensional defect in such kind of defects so these are in general point if you look at that zero dimensional defects such as thermal vacancies self interstitials impurities anti site or anti structure atoms all are the equilibrium defects so equilibrium concentration depends on the type of bonding and structure of material please pay attention there are different defects which are really actually helping to decrease the free energy and making the material thermodynamically more stable and if you look at such kind of zero dimensional defects such as thermal vacancies self interstitial impurities and anti sites now equilibrium concentration of such defects actually depends on depends on type of bonding structure of material and on the contrary if you look at on the other hand when addition of defects increase the free energy they are called non equilibrium defects so now we are getting what is equilibrium defects and what is non equilibrium defects and if you want to understand non equilibrium defects what we understood that when addition of such defects increase the free energy that means that in the presence of sufficient thermal energy our system will try to decrease the concentration of such defects and irradiation or deformation induced point defects dislocation grain boundary interfaces are examples of such kind of defects in the slide if you look at here i have tried to represent different types of point defects such as vacancy self interstitials substitutional solid impurity and interstitial solid impurity and it i take a representative case and all are shown for the basal plane plane of model acp lattice okay so if you look at the picture you can see the defects are generally classified according to their dimens dimen dimensionality point defects are the zero dimensional defects means if you look at the point defects there will be no dimension there are different type point defects such as vacancy if you look at the picture you can identify what is vacancy self interstitial 
You can look at that same way you can identify solute and antisites. So now we have to understand what is vacancy. When a component or atom, it may be atoms, it may be ions, are missing from regular lattice point, these are called vacancies. When these host atoms are located at an interstitial position instead of its regular lattice position, then these are called self interstitials. Means the atom, host atoms are there, means the matrix atoms and the interstitial position, the new placed atoms are same. Means host atoms are located at the interstitial position instead of regular lattice position. Then we can, can tell them as a self interstitials. So please note that these are the different from impurity atoms present in interstitial site. Okay. Since in a typical metallic lattice, the size of a void at interstitial position is small to accommodate a host atom displaced from its regular lattice point. The corresponding formation is should be high and the concentration of self interstitials in pure metal or substitutional alloy is negligibly small because it is very difficult to hold the host atoms uh, in the interstitial positions. To, therefore, this kind of defects is relatively uncommon in metal unless the material is subjected to irradiation. Radiation damage if you are doing, then such kind of defects in self-interstitial generally come out. So vacancies, on the other hand, the dominant equilibrium defects in the metal. Okay. At above 0 degree Kelvin, vacancy free material is impossible physically. Please keep in your mind that above 0 degree Kelvin, the absolute zero temperature, vacancy free material is impossible physically because it is an equilibrium kind of defects and it helps to material becoming thermodynamically stable. So in a covalent solid, you can take the example of semiconductor. The situation, if you look at, it's more involved. So both self-interstitial and vacancies can be dominant in intrinsic defects at equilibrium for such kind of semiconductor material. So we now understood there are different kind of Defects, point defects are there, or zero dimensional defects are there, vacancy, self interstitial, interstitial, okay, and anti -size. So, vacancy, what is vacancy? If in the regular lattice position any atom is missing, self interstitial, if host atom goes to the interstitial side, substitutional solid. When the impurity atom replace the regular lattice point of host atom and then interstitial solid, when an impurity atom goes into the interstitial site or interstitial void site. So these are the different point defects are there. Those point defects are very important when we are going to learn about the atomic scale diffusion mechanism. Now we are going to understand what is anti-site defects. Please pay attention to the slide and the picture of the slide, then you can slowly uh, can correlate with my talk and the slide diagram. In this figure, another type of thermodynamic equilibrium defects, you can tell them anti sites or anti structure atoms are present. And that kind of defects are present in such a, some, some compounds. In a compound being prone to ordering, compounds are very being prone to ordering. And different subslattice may be defined for different components. Now, however, if you try to understand with respect to configurational entropy, then what will happen? That because, because of configurational entropy, grain, certain concentration of the components occupy a 
wrong sublattice. That is the sublattice for the another atom component. If you see in the picture, you can understand. Suppose that alpha sublattice is designed for A, and why this beta sublattice is designed for B? But when A occupies beta sublattice and B occupies alpha sublattice, these defects are called A antisite and B antisite respectively. When these are present, even at a stoichiometric composition, because of thermodynamic reasons, such defects are called thermal defects. And these are the very important statement that due to certain configurational entropy grain, certain concentration of components occupy wrong sublattice. And then we are going to understand that is andesite. And they are actually, they are actually present in order to accommodate a composition deviation from the stoichiometric composition. And then also you can tell that these are the structural or constitutional defects. And in this case, also, I want to say one thing that depending upon the source, point defects also can be classified into two categories, intrinsic and extrinsic. When defects are created by displacement of own atoms in a impurity free crystal, then you are telling them intrinsic defects. Therefore, vacancy, cell interstitial, antisites are intrinsic defects. When defects are created by adding impurity atom or foreign atoms, then you have to tell them extrinsic defects. Solutes, impurities are classified as the extrinsic defects. In ionic compound, later we will discuss that vacancies and interstitials can also be created extrinsically by adding alloying element. You can take the example of doping in case of electronic material industries. Now, if you look at any ionic compound, unlike in metallic system, defects are present in ionic form. So defect chemistry becoming complex because the need of the charge neutrality along with the mass conservation is important. Not only you have to follow the mass conservation, you have to follow the charge neutrality also. And the fixed ratio of sites of anions and cations depending on the stoichiometric composition, you have to go for charge neutrality. So along with the point defects, electronic defects, suppose such as holes, excited electrons are also created in the process. So you have to very cautious about that. Okay, so intrinsic thermal defects can be created in different way. And that can be explained based on two kind of defects. One is Scotty and one is Franklin. What you are seeing in the slides. Suppose when you are going to create equal number of anions and cations vacancies and then you are going to get the Scotty defects. And ions leave their position if you look at the picture and travel to surface living behind the vacancy site. Therefore, such, it, such defects creates volume expansion. If you look at the picture, you can understand that and leading to a decrease in crystal density. So that Scotty defect actually create a scenario, it actually increase the volume, it actually causing the volume expansion when equally many cations and anions transform from the surface to interstitial position, such defect you can tell that anti scotty defect. And they are, on the contrary, increase the density of the material. So when the movement of cations from regular site 
to interstitial position creates vacant site and interstitial cavity you can tell them it's called a franklin defect you can check in the picture also when movement of anion creates the same type of defect namely vacant anion site or anion interstitial you can tell them anti franklin defect as a then you have to think that as a matter of fact all types of defects are possible in a particular compound all kind of defects can be present in a particular or specific compound it's not like that you have to go for different compound to in order to get the different defects there are there are very good chance to to present all these kind of defects scotty anti scotty franklin anti franklin all defects can present in a particular compound but one type of typically dominates over the other based on favorable enthalpy of the formation so for the enthalpy formation of that particular defects actually govern which defect which type of defect are going to dominate over others so most most common defects are the scotty defect and franklin defects so hope you understood that now we are going to understand how vacancy is created by transport of atom to surface you can tell scotty mechanism through the different states so first we understood what is scotty defects so now we are going to understand that so stability of a system at constant pressure we can define by the value of gibbs energy and how it is expressed it is well known to us capital g equal to h minus ts now suppose a phase is stable when it has minimum free energy so you can tell that the phase a one phase is stable when it is having minimum free energy that we know that which actually indicates that there is not to do a particular work or make a phase transformation possible so when you are when a phase having minimum energy in particular condition in constant temperature or pressure or something or constant pressure that means that there is not enough free energy to do particular work or make a phase transformation feasible so any change or transformation in system is possible when there is a chance for the system to transform to a state with lower free energy this means that transform is possible when del g is negative this criteria already known to us means del h minus t del s is must be less than zero so thermal vacancies are created when atom diffuses from the interior of the crystal to the free surface if you look at the picture in first one that thermal vacancy and then you look at second picture then what you are seeing that thermal vacancies are created at the time when atoms diffuse from the interior of a crystal to the free surface leaving behind vacant site by scotty mechanism and what is the mechanism if you look at the picture the broken bonds due to the creation of vacancy lead to an increase in enthalpy that is positive change in enthalpy and that is del h v suppose bond bond is broken and why it is broken because the vacancy created in if you look at in the second state then you can understand it so lead to an scenario where increase in enthalpy so there will be a positive change in enthalpy this is unfavorable for the system because this is very difficult because there is a positive change of enthalpy value however if you look at at the same time there is a increase in contribution of entropy both because of irregular vibration of the atom surrounding the vacancy and entropy of mixing means configurational entropy so what we understood that configurational as well as thermal entropy both are increasing 
so that is also important in order to get the equilibrium structure or stable structure and that is different possibilities of mixing arrangement of components and vacancies this in fact favorably decrease the free energy of the system because you know capital g equal to h minus cx so if s is increasing then what will happen there is a chance of every chance of favorably decrease the free energy of the particular system therefore the creation of the vacancy is really governed or influenced by the change in uh, unfavorable enthalpy and favorable entropy it is a very dicey thing if so the creation of vacancy can be influenced by the variation by the variation in unfavorable enthalpy as well as favorable entropy so we have to find out these two competitive factors which one are going to dominate based on that you can understand that is positive way the creation of vacancy is influenced or negative way it is influenced as overall combination of h minus tm terms ts term this can be further if you understand if you want to understand this can be further understood from the thermodynamic description of the vacancy creation okay please note that the case of not interacting defect we are considering here so so since the equilibrium concentration of vacancy is typically small the enthalpy change due to broken bonds and entropy change due to irregular vibration could be considered to vary linearly with the vacancy concentration uh, concentration that we can do that now we what we understood that introducing a vacancy also give rise to considerable change of configuration of entropy because of increased possibilities of arrangement between components and vacancies now you are getting in, in inside of two things one is vacancy and components so there is every chance to get the higher configurational entropy okay now we understood the scotty mechanism now we are going to understand how it is related to the enthalpy entropy and free energy change in pure component because of addition of vacancy how things are changing so you have to find out that how the how the few important modification you have to understand till date what you are what we are we are gathered we gathered the concept regarding this kind of entropy and enthalpy change for the mixing but here the things as vacancy is adding then how things are changing so first we have to take one stand that we are considering here the limit of non interacting defects and their negligible concentration that we are taking now the enthalpy change del h can be represented with respect to vacancy enthalpy change, uh, entropy change with respect to vacancy all things can be represented and if you look at the picture there are different techniques available for the determination of vacancy concentration in the solid somebody can measure through the thermal expansion or resistivity because that is very important in order to understand this picture so after measuring the equilibrium concentration of vacancy at particular temperature one only can put 
only can estimate the formation of free energy that is here del of capital g v star okay however in experiments instead of measuring the absolute absolute vacancy concentrated at particular temperature we generally or we actually measure the relative change in the vacancy concentration because of a change in temperature suppose with respect to change in temperature we generally measure the absolute we generally measure instead of absolute vacancy we generally measure the relative change in vacancy so here you can therefore you can actually measure the activation enthalpy if you look at the figure second figure second figure then you can see there we are actually measuring the enthalpy and in which the slope is equal to del not del slope is equal to minus h v star by r and entropy term can be calculated from the pre exponential factor but it could also be avoided since it's generally too small so may incur high error in the calculation if, if you if you are working in any numerical method or numerical simulation then if two numbers or two variable having a very difference in the number dimension suppose one is having one unit one unit or five unit value and another is, is 0.705 value so that can create a serious problem to calculate numerically numerical simulation cases so that is also important so if you finding that is a, some too small quantity you have to in, ignore it then only you can get the proper or accurate result otherwise that can incur very high error during the numerical calculations so the variation of equilibrium vacancy concentration with temperature in pure copper or any metal you can see in the third third figure and at even at 1000 degree if you look at the picture if you look at the picture if you look at the picture a third this figure that 1000 degree centigrade which is close to the melting point of a particular copper if you take the example the mole fraction of the vacancy is around 3.7 and 10 to the power minus 4 if you look in the picture properly so that the around 10 to the power minus 4 range and so this kind of concentration variation and with respect to temperature and when the vacancy concentration variation such a way is happening after certain temperature you are getting that that steepness of the curve is not there so rate of vacancy generation is not so high now we are going to understand what will be the voids the things are that if you look at the bcc crystal the octahedral voids the structure of octahedral voids and tetrahedral voids you are looking in the picture and then green are host atom blue are interstitial atom and uh, blank open hole are showing the voids now you see the both picture a and and please pay attention for few seconds for metallurgical engineering sector or material technology sector such kind of crystal structure understanding of such kind of crystal structure and their void shape and their symmetry or asymmetry nature is very important so octahedral and tetrahedral voids in bcc crystals if you see in general interstitial atoms interstitial atoms are bigger than the void size available if you look at carbon and hydrogen the ratio and both bcc and fcc crystals same problem with the with respect to 
this understanding that interstitial atom size is more with respect to void size available. And that generates strain to the crystal to increase the enthalpy of the system, which is really unfavorable. So if you look at in the BCC crystal in the slide, the ratio of the, uh, the you know, the ratio of the radius of interstitial void Ri, you can look at that and you can know that if it is a BCC crystal iron, if you take the example, that Ra is the 0.29. And point, so, so the void, the interstitial void Ri and Ra, there is a very high difference. Uh, other than hydrogen atom, carbon atom, nitrogen atom, if you place there in the void, you will find that the atom will be having higher radius with the radius of the void. So that always creates a strain. And if the open space structure is asymmetric, then the asymmetric strain or disturbance towards the increase in enthalpy will less compared to if you place if you are placing the same thing in asymmetric one. So when an interstitial atom occupies a tetrahedral void, it strains all four atoms surrounding it. When, when you are putting an atom in tetrahedral void, it, it, it creates asymmetrical strain and it actually pushes all the four atoms surrounding it. But when it occupies an octahedral void, it mainly strains two atoms. And if you look at in the picture, the ad number of atoms is one and two. Please look at that. One, one and two, these two atoms, it actually stretches. But in case of you are putting in that octetedral void, things are different. He tries to strain all four atoms. So that actually creates a scenario that interstitial atoms are really comfortably can sit with respect to uh, in a octahedral void compared to tetrahedral voids. So now we are going for next slide where we will see the tetrahedral voids in a FCC crystal and, and oct octahedral voids in the FCC crystal. It is found that, and from the structure also you can understand that number of octahedral voids is more in a FCC crystal with respect to tetrahedral voids, if you go for per unit volume calculation. So that makes a scenario, if you look at um, in the iron phase alloy like steel, when it is ferrite phase, means BCC structure iron, in BCC iron, the solubility of carbon is less compared to solubility of carbon in FCC iron. And that is because the void, the octahedral void is more in population in FCC crystal or FCC iron. And although if you look at atomic packing fraction or that this BCC has less, less dense or lessly close packed with respect to FCC. FCC is more close packed structure. Still it can accommodate more carbon atoms since it is having a better option with respect to void structure, that is octahedral void, symmetrical void. Okay. Now we are going to understand another kind of defects from zero dimensional defect to one dimensional defect, that is dislocation. Dislocation is a line defect and so here you can the picture you can see the dislocation line and dislocation is line defect means it actually talks about extra half of plane of one side of the um, defect free and defect with defect crystals that boundary so if there is extra half of atomic line or missing the uh, any atomic line then you will get the dislocation and that is edge dislocation because the dislocation line and barger vector if you look at the barger vector it is the magnitude and the, it shows the magnitude and direction of the dislocation they are basically if you look at the barger vector and dislocation line they are 
basically perpendicular so that is the is this location and they actually walk through the gliding method and glide plane will be like that the the plane where this location rise uh, line is line so if you want to understand this process this location that is a uh, this location theory course in mechanical metallurgy subject but here just i am introducing these things because these defects also can influence the diffusion process and atomic if you want to know the atomic mechanism So there is diffusion and dislocation movement has a very strong correlation because at high temperature the atom can move and dislocation climb can occur as dislocation cannot do the cross slip means one slip plane to another slip plane as dislocation cannot go but if there is a diffusion process highly activated and line of atom can diffuse if you look at this picture that atom is goes to certain vacancy because vacancy is increasing then the dislocation can climb means one position on plane to another plane so this climb mechanism can be activated at high temperature when the thermal vacancy concentration will be high and can lead to the diffusion process so that dislocation climb can occur this is a very important understanding then you have to understand the screw dislocation screw dislocation is a dislocation where dislocation line and butcher vector are parallel and here what is happening since this parallelism with respect to dislocation line and butcher vector there is a chances of staying same slip plane both butcher vector and the dislocation line is very high so that's why cross slip mechanism means one slip plane to another plane one plane to another plane the movement of the dislocation is easier not required high temperature and dislocation climb so that cross slip mechanism are activated mechanism is activated so that's why in screw dislocation you can tell that through cross slip from one slip plane to another slip plane it can go so this is a one kind of dislocation that is screw dislocation there is a two kind of dislocation one is edge another is screw but in reality in reality dislocation are in general of a mixed type and instead of being pure edge or pure screw if you look in the practical cases they are actually in the mixed type and you can see in the illustrated diagram in the slide at one end of the plane above which the location of the atoms are dislocated the butcher vector is parallel to the dislocation line if you look at very mildly you can understand that and therefore here we have a pure screw dislocation at the other end if you look at the butcher vector of b is perpendicular to the dislocation line and therefore that there is a pure edge dislocation however in the middle portion in the middle it is of of a mixed type dislocation both screw and is this components are there so in reality generally dislocation are present as a mixed type instead of pure edge or pure screw dislocation and another kind of defects is the area defect or you can tell that the interface suppose phase 1 and phase 2 if you look and there is a three different kind of interface is there coherent incoherent and semi coherent from the picture also you can understand if you mildly observe what is coherent what is semi coherent and what is incoherent suppose if you look at interface boundary presented in this slide if you look at that that interface boundary can be of three different types already i told that is can and but based on what the three different types based on the extent of mismatch of the neighboring lengths okay coherent semi coherent and incoherent okay in coherent boundary what is happening 
the lattice planes across the interface are continuous. If you look at the lattice planes across the interface is continuous. And if you take a practical example, the lattice parameter of two different phases are never exactly the same. Therefore, elastically strained when maintaining the continuity. So that's why there is elastic strain is there to maintain the continuity. But this is, is a type of interface. If you can see, uh, it's generally so, uh, uh, seen in the nickel aluminum solid solution or Ni3L intermetallic phases in a nickel based super alloy. If you look at nickel based super alloy, Ni3L intermetallic, intermetallic phases, you can look at the such kind of phase, you can find this kind of warrant kind of interface. But in the absence of lattice plane continuity, if there is no lattice plane continuity is there, okay, incoherent interfaces are found. If you look at the picture number, second picture or B, picture B. In general, the interface between impurities and the matrix are coherent, in general. But many system, you can, uh, in general, there is an interface between impurities and the matrix are incoherent. It is very common. But there are many examples that they are do not so complete incoherency or complete coherence. Okay, so in between that. So both continuous and discontinuous lattice planes are found across the phase boundary. Okay, so therefore during substitutional diffusion, creation or annihilation of defects can be found in semi coherent kind of interfaces. Okay, so you will find semi coherent interfaces. Now we are going to understand on, on a special kind of defects that is called grain boundary. Grain boundary is a reason misorientation between two adjacent crystal. If you and if you want to represent orientation of a particular crystal, suppose here crystal one x1 x2 x3 dot three axis and crystal two x1 x2 x3, but they are having misorientation reason and that you know interface you can tell that so orientation of two neighboring crystal one and two normal to grain boundary if you find there is a little bit of disorientation from the picture also you can understand that so grain boundary is a misoriented reason between two adjacent neighboring crystal or adjacent crystal or two neighboring crystals and based on different Misorientation type, you can get the tilt. There is a different features. Tilt boundary. Suppose if you look at the first figure, there is a tilt from one crystal to another with this to another crystal. And in second figure, there is a twist kind of things. You can tell twist boundary. And sometimes there is a stacking of this dislocation makes a substructure. That is a low angle gain boundary. So these are different kind of gain boundary. These are also area, uh, these different kind of gain boundaries are there. This is also area defect. So this is also important with respect to understanding the diffusion process. Now we are directly go to different types of diffusion mechanism. So, in first we will look at interstitial mechanism. Although in the picture, in the slide, it's given uh, vacancy mediated diffusion. First, we'll start with the interstitial. Then we are going to learn vacancy or uh, in self interstitials. So, an atom is said to be diffused by interstitial mechanism when it passes from one interstitial site to another of its neighboring nearest neighbor interstitial site without permanently displacing any of the matrix. If you look at the picture, you can understand. In the figure, it shows that interstitial site, already we know for how interstitial site are, looks like with respect to octahedral void and tetrahedral voids. So in the figure, suppose FCC lattice you are taking, an atom would diffuse by an interstitial mechanism in this lattice by jumping from one site to another 
of the sub lattice of the interstitial points so in this way the diffusion is occurring then we can tell that that interstitial mechanism is operative let us slide we understand uh, how many germ can possible okay so the interstitial mechanism have can be operated in the alloy where the solute normally dissolve interstitially suppose carbon in alpha and gamma atom in addition it can also can be occur in substitutional alloy also we told told there is one kind of defect self interstitiality so for example the radiation damage by radiation damage already we had discussed with respect to the generation of defects now we have to understand how it is going to relate to diffusion process or mechanism of diffusion suppose for example the radiation damage studies energy particles suppose neutrons example neutrons can knock atoms off from normal or regular lattice sites into interstitial position to form what we call self interstitial and these diffuse quite easily once formed as another example of copper or gold atom dissolve substitutionally in the lead but their average diffusion coefficient is much greater than that for lead atoms so this way you can also see that self interstitial mechanism can be operative now if such kind of defect is present in the material now we are going to look at vacancy mechanism all crystal some of the lattice sites are unoccupied and these unoccupied site we can easily tell that vacancy already we told and if one of the atoms adjacent site jump into the vacancy and the atom is said to be have to have diffused by vacancy mechanism one atom is from its position to the and what we already learned from scotty defect okay so this way you can understand so now you can also understand that the reason that iron diffuses if you are looking at iron steel alloys so much more slowly than argon is that that each carbon atom always has the many vacant nearest neighboring interstitial site if you look at iron it has not so vacant regular site but carbon having said that way so that comfort zone to having more number of vacant nearest neighboring interstitial sites the fraction of vacant iron site you can tell is very small so when you are looking at the phase transformation in diffusion for the diffusion control phase transformation for steel then always you can tell that it's a carbon diffusion carbon concentration gradient carbon diffusion process are dominating dominating because it is easy to diffuse with respect to iron atoms and if you look at next slide here you can understand in hcc lattice lattice how many jump how many possible jump can possible that is 2 12 possible jumps because coordination number of is 12 and here the 12 jump can be possible for a jump vector is there for a particular atoms okay and here you can see uh, atoms moving from a position to another position and how the energy is varying so in the schematic diagram presented in the slide you can say diffusing atom uh, when it will go to the saddle point throughout the crystal there will always be atoms entering this configuration as well as leaving it and to calculate the number of atoms at the saddle point at, a, at any instant it is necessary to the increase in it is necessary to know the increase in the gibbs free energy of a region when an atom in it moves from its normal site to saddle position and then you can understand 
the how the process is occurring energetically and it is represented in the pictorial diagram now there is a chance of pipe depletion because this location can be extra plane or you are missing a one atomic plane so through that atom can diffuse from one position to another position now there is another mechanism that is called surface diffusion because from the surface one vacancy can inside to that and from the vacancy can go uh, displace the atom so that can be done and that is also can lead to a scenario where there is a vacancy and host atom configurational entropy then we are going to understand about diffusion coefficient diffusion coefficient you can name is a diffusivity is the important parameter which will tell you about the diffusion mobility but d is the proportionally constant between diffusion flux and the gradient concentration of the diffusing species species but there is a two diffusion and things are diffusing the material is diffusing as well as the tracer diffusion suppose you want to mark something what is tracer diffusion here it is written which is a spontaneous mixing of molecules taking place in the absence of concentration or chemical potential potential gradient and this type of diffusion can be followed using isotropic stressor hence the name the stressor diffusion is usually assumed to be identical to self diffusion and that this diffusion can take place under equilibrium this is a very important understanding and chemical diffusion if you want to know then chemical diffusion occurs in a presence of concentration gradient and it results in net task code of mass this is the process described by the diffusion equation this diffusion is always a non equilibrium process increase the system entropy brings the system closer to the equilibrium so the diffusion coefficient for these two types of diffusion are generally different because the diffusion coefficient for chemical diffusion is binary we understood that and it includes the effects due to the correlation of the movement of the different diffusing pieces so this is the understanding already we have discussed lot about that so we can understand now easily just listening the statement now due to such kind of scenario the kirchendall effect may occur a the a can move faster in b and b move slower in a if such kind of difference in the movement of the atom in each other matrix then there will be a chances of kirchendall effect and kirchendall the interface will be changed from its original position to there based on the different uh, things different movement relative movement and the diffusion intrinsic the diffusion coefficient also can be written in the average of such a way with the average and that mathematically you can get the uh, intrinsic average diffusion coefficient and you can understand that move, that interface actual interface is moving from, towards the b side because why it is happening based on the relative difference between movement of a and b in each other's matrix that is the reason of kirchendall effect and that is uh, also related to the diffusivity of a in b and b in a is different that's why that kirchendall effect is coming to play today lecture is over thank you